Thank you so much to Deacon Reuben. It's so wonderful to have him always with us. I'm having a hard time reading because of my eyes with the allergies. Uh, and so I'm very grateful always to Deacon and to all of you for being here today. In the readings for this weekend, we hear about the mustard seed. To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is within you. Heaven, the definition of heaven that Jesus gives us is a banquet, a party. You cannot have a banquet or a party by yourself in front of a television or with your cell phone. I often wonder I'm, why they named them cell phones because I think they put people in prison. They're in cells. We, we get into a, a prison with our cell phone. You cannot have a feast by yourself. Hence, the best definition that I have found for heaven, for the kingdom, is a community. Hell. The absence of God is isolation, loneliness. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that is planted where? Within you and then springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. If you have the kingdom of God within you, you're going to become a large plant on, like a bush under whose branches people will be able to find shade. Do they? Do people find shade underneath your branches. When I was a prison chaplain for three years visiting the inmates at Pelican Bay State Prison, the most maximum security prison in the state of California, At that time, in Pelican Bay, they had what is called the SHU, the Security Housing Unit, which has since been outlawed for good purposes because the inmates, the prisoners, were in total isolation from anybody else kept in a small little cell only allowed to go out for one hour a day to exercise again in a small little place concrete no sunlight and I brought you all the letters 
this is just one box that I have from all the, many of them continue to write to me. You can see here, I'm going to block off the name of the, but there's some, this is a box full. And you can see here, can, it says it right here, security housing unit right here. Okay, there's a box full of letters, and I've got boxes and boxes because I kept them all, okay? They would write to me because I couldn't visit them every day. I was also the pastor, so. And the prison was, had thousands of, of inmates. Torture. That's what they were subjected to. That's my definition of cruel and unusual punishment. That is why the main cause of death at Pelican Bay is suicide. No wonder these young men would spend their days thinking of ways to take their own life. Most of them extremely mentally ill young men. Schizophrenic, bipolar, deep depression, seeing things. They got that way in this isolation. You go mad! And people would say, but they've got a TV. They get to have dental care. They get three meals a day. They have it better than I do. Isn't the Bible say man does not live by bread alone? And we continue to believe that. That all you need is stuff. Things. Huh? The communists were wonderful at that, right? You know, all you need is things. You don't need God. All you need is work, material things. But we're Christians. We know that it's not like that. We need God, and to have God, it's not like he's out there, you know. <laughs> I think I've told you this before. When I was in the seminary, we had this big guru come and talk to us, this spiritual guru, this priest who was supposedly, you know, uh, a, a, an expert in the spiritual life. Be careful with those experts. And... and and this one young man during the retreat, a seminarian, got up and he says, I no longer want to be a priest because I don't want to be alone in this life, he says. And the priest says, but you're never alone. You're always with God. And he says, but Father, you know, I want to I wanna have somebody in my life, you know. I want to have sex in my life, he says. He was a young man, you know. And the priest looks at him, this spiritual guru, and says, well, you're going to have to learn how to have sex with Jesus. A biggest, the biggest bunch of spiritual hogwash I've ever heard. Huh? Adam was in paradise. He was in heaven, wasn't he? So he was in the presence of God. And yet that wasn't enough. God says, you need Eve because it's not good for the human being to be by himself or herself. That's why I need to form a suitable partner for you. Because the way we experience God is through the incarnation. That is God becoming flesh. Not, uh, we experience God in the other. God continues to become flesh in the people around us. God has a body, and that's your husband's body. Mm -hmm. 
That's your wife's body, your kid's body, your co-worker's body. Look around. We are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. You want to see God? Don't just come and, you know, oh, Lord, I love you so much. Look at your husband. Hmm? Look at your wife. Look at your kids. Look at all the people. You want to love God? You got to love the people around you. You, you want you, the kingdom of God having it within us. If you truly have the kingdom of God, and it's, it ain't a big thing. It's very small, you know. That's why Jesus says it's, it's the smallest of the seeds. All you need is just a little bit. And it springs up and becomes a big bush under which everyone, all the birds come and can hide there, find shelter, find solace, find comfort, find peace, find love. Huh? And isn't God love? Last I read in the Bible, when we come into contact with love, we come into contact with God. So if you've got faith huh, and the kingdom in you, you should be a bush. Are you? You know, Adam and Eve... When they were kicked out of paradise, they got to take nothing. When they were kicked out of heaven, they got to take nothing except each other. So they became one another's piece of heaven. Are you a piece of heaven or are you a piece of hell? Huh? And oftentimes we can become pieces of hell through judgment, through the way we carry ourselves, through our impatience, through our mouth. Am I a piece of heaven? Am I a bush? That's a test of whether I've got the kingdom in me. This young man that I visited, he was always in my mind. He was totally suicidal. No wonder, no sunlight, all by himself. He wanted to take his own life. And I said to him, I said, why would you want to take your own life? And he says to me, Father Adam, in that prison cell in Pelican Bay, in the shoe. He says, Everybody's given up on me. Everyone's given up on me, he says. I've got nobody. Everyone's given up on me. My own mother, he says, doesn't write to me, doesn't visit me. Everyone's given up on me. No wonder with those feelings in him, he wanted to give up on himself. Huh? And I looked at him and I told him, what I want to tell each and every one of you. Well, I haven't given up on you, I said to him. I haven't given up on you. I'm here. I haven't given up on you. Even though a mother, the Bible says, is capable of forgetting her own child. I will never forget you, says the Lord. 
And how will the world know? How will the people around you know that God has not given up on them? Only through you. I haven't given up on you, I said to him. I love you. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. But I've done all these things in my life. Who hasn't? Let the first one without sin throw a stone. We think we're better, aren't we? We think we're better than prisoners. We think we're better than these people, those people. We're all sinners in need of God's mercy. You're not better than anybody else. You think you're better than your husband or your wife or your brother or your sister or your co-workers or your neighbor. You're not. You go to the bathroom the same way as they do and put your underwear on the same way. Even the Pope puts his underwear on the same way you do. We're all in need of God's mercy and love. And the only way the world will get to know that is through us. And then I did something that I should not have done because I put my hand through the bars of the cell, which was totally forbidden. And I put my hands through the bars and he squeezed my hand and he began to cry. And he says, it's been four years that somebody has touched me. Four years. Mother Teresa said the real poverty in the world is the poverty of love, not material poverty. Look at what's going on right here in California. This week I, was, I had to go to Sacramento encampments everywhere of homeless people and the state of California can't throw enough money at homeless most of them if you talk to them and I do they don't want to go to shelters or places they like their community they form a community they don't want to be by themselves somewhere in a small little apartment that the state's going to give them, throwing money. Huh? They're hungry for community. We can't give enough food away in this town. I mean, they're calling me from every... Uh, Father, we got all this food. Tell your people to come and get the food. They're dropping food off for me. I mean, you know. <laughs> that ain't the issue. It's the United States. And the number one cause of death is suicide. And the number one drugs prescribed are 
for depression. Instead of injecting money, let's inject love, community. Hmm? That's why church is so necessary, you know. Uh, that's, it's essential, I would say, wouldn't you? It's kind of essential. You know, they tried to tell us it wasn't. Huh? Everything was essential, including the casinos, except church. Hmm? You could fly on airplanes all huddled together, but you couldn't go to church. <laughs> But I'm digressing here, which I never do, of course. And after, I visited him that time. He began to draw for me. He says, will you continue to visit me? And I said, of course I will continue to visit you. And he began to draw for me. And this is one picture he drew me. I have a bunch of them. But I love this one. And he's alive to this very day. Mm -hmm. because somebody didn't just tell him. Somebody let him feel that God didn't give up on him. Mm -hmm. And God hasn't given up on you either. 